Shalom, Shana Tova. This message is for everyone who is celebrating Rosh Hashanah in some way. I just wanted to remind you that this is all about the incoming light, right? Like we have a chance to receive this glorious, profound, new light as we pre prepare our vessels during these high holy days. So with tonight being Rosh Hashanah, I wanted to just prepare in our minds so that we can be the most ready to receive this incoming light. Think about it this way. What have you been working on that you want so badly? First of all, ask yourself, why do I want this thing so badly? How is this going to affect my world, my reality? How is it going to affect our world and our reality? So it's really about checking with your goals and asking, are these goals actually worthy of my pursuing them? And then you want to ask yourself, if I could receive this extra light, this extra life that's incoming right now with these days of awe, what would I do with that light? Well, wouldn't you do all those things that you've been wanting to do so badly, accomplish all those things you've been wanting to accomplish so deeply? So why would you turn down that opportunity to receive that extra energy, that extra power to accomplish worthy goals, right? So let's get, let's have an example. So I'm trying to form my thoughts as we go. I didn't like, I didn't script this. I didn't plan it. I just really wanted to share what's on my mind and in my heart because I was having a talk with someone earlier about this. And let's use that situation as an example. This friend has some health issues going on, right? And a lot of us can relate to that because it's our health and the health of the planet is greatly suffering. And that means many of us are suffering too with different ailments and diseases. So this person is suffering greatly. His health is suffering and he forgot that it's Rosh Hashanah, so I reminded him, first of all. And I said, now that you are reminded of this powerful opportunity, why would you not do all that you can to prepare to receive this incoming light so that you can use that light toward healing, even just your physical self? You're going to one of these doctors, you're trying all these things. Would it really hurt to try this, this strategy for Rosh Hashanah? And he agreed, absolutely right. And I just wanted to bring that to the table here so that we can all look at our own lives and say, hmm, how many, how many things can I identify in my life, like projects that I've been trying to pursue or how many goals do I have that I've been trying to accomplish that I can just make that connection in my awareness right now to say, wow, if I receive this extra light, if I do all that, because it, it takes work, right? It takes effort. If I do all that I can to prepare to receive this light, I will receive this light and this light will support my goal of X, Y, or Z. The catch is your goal has to be in alignment with the healing of the whole because you're a part of the whole. And until you remember that, all of all that you pursue will just be futile because everything you pursue is temporary, is finite, and um, you're treating yourself as separate. Okay, so the universe doesn't work that way. Life supports life. When you have goals that are for the whole, those goals are supported by nature and the cosmos. So tonight, we can ask ourselves, like my friend, what have my goals been and where have I been putting so much effort into these goals? And I ask myself, how can I instead put the effort into this process of Rosh Hashanah, building this new vessel, all that that implies, which we'll talk about in a second, you know, just basically being the best version of yourself. How can I instead focus on that? And just for this time of this high, holy time of Rosh Hashanah, really commit to looking at myself and doing all that I can to first better myself before asking for whatever that thing is, before asking for that goal or before stepping back into that pursuit, knowing that, okay, I've done my best and I feel right about asking Hashem, creator, God, source for this next chance at life, for this year ahead for this new year ahead. We have to be in a space of feeling worthy. We have to feel our own worthiness if we want to receive this light that's coming in. So we need to know what we're going to do with it. If you don't have a goal, 
with what you're going to do with that light. If you don't have a why or inspiration or a vision of the future, then why are you asking for it? You're never going to get it. You have to have your why. You have to have a knowing of why you're doing this, why you're asking for this. On Rosh Hashanah, we ask Hashem to seal our names in the book of life. Give us another chance for life. Give us a fresh chance for the year ahead. Okay, but it's not all just apples and honey, like I spoke about in my earlier message today. It's also about acknowledging all those things that we, that we thought, said, or did that weren't up to par, that weren't really worthy, and being honest about that, and acknowledging all that we can remember from this past year that maybe wasn't an expression of our best self. And each time we make peace with each of those moments, we're building our potential to receive the incoming light for these high holy days, these days of awe. We have to know why we're doing it. When we envision the future of what it's going to look like, what we're going to do with that light, it gives that light a vessel. It gives it a purpose. It gives it a reason to come to us now. If you don't have the reasons, you're going to struggle to open up to receive that light. You know, we all go through life, no matter what calendar you follow, wherever your new year is, we all tend to just stumble through those important points, the beginnings and the ends. Instead of really honoring the ending, and which is simultaneously best preparing for the new beginning, we just move right through that finish line and that starting line, because they're one. But how can we best honor these sacred points in time and space? The more we acknowledge them and honor them and do rituals that are a reflection of them, the more we align our awareness and our whole being in all dimensions, even physically. We align our whole being with the forces of nature and the cosmos. We align with nature and the cosmos. This is how we achieve a graceful flow in life. So tonight it's Rosh Hashanah. It's not just for Jews. It's for anyone who wants to access the magic and the power of what is being offered to us through nature and the cosmos right now, which beyond nature and the cosmos is the mother, father, God, whatever you want to call that, the great one. Okay, this ritual is for anyone. How can you, as the sun sets tonight, it's not just about family traditions and about dipping apples in honey. It is about the deeper aspect of self-reflection and really looking, judging, right? Or Shoshana, judgment day, really looking and judging all of our thoughts, words, and actions this past year, you know, at least whatever we can conjure up to really look at, anything we can to put that mirror in front of ourselves. I encourage you to do that tonight. Take some time alone, go within, internalize the experience, because only when you're in that space can you be the most receptive to be able to perform that task of looking at yourself in the mirror, because it's not always easy. So tonight, as the sun goes down, find that time, create that space, be one with that infinite space. Look at yourself and know that you're about to step through the threshold. You've got your foot about to step in that portal. How can you just say, whoa, 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 hold up here, pause. This is a sacred beginning about to take place. How can I make it the best? How can I put my best foot forward? And we do that by looking at our past year and really reflecting on it. Like that moment before you die, you hear about near death or death experiences and people say, my life flashed before my eyes. Tonight is kind of like that. And it, it's not scary. It's not intended to be scary, but it's intended to be real. So pause and review your past year. And then ask yourself, why do I deserve another year? This incoming light, this incoming life at this holy time of the year how can I open up to receive that through understanding in consciousness and my awareness that I need that light to do great things for us, for all of us as one? That's what Rosh Hashanah is about. For those of you who want to know more about Rosh Hashanah, please join our private group Shabbat Crew on Facebook. It's Shabbat Crew, S-H-A-B-B-A-T space crew, C-R-E-W, Shabbat crew. 
I post in there every week about the Kabbalistic understanding of the Torah story, the current Torah story. But right now we're focused obviously on the days of awe, the high holy days. So I've been posting a lot today and I'll be sharing more about the mystical and metaphysical understanding of Rosh Hashanah so that we can really lock these codes in because they're incoming. They're here right now. We're taking them in and I'm studying, I'm doing my own research, I'm learning every year more and more, it never ends. And as I learn, I would love to share what I learned with you guys and you guys could share what you learn as well as we're doing it in the process. That way we can share these perspectives to help open up our collective mind to our greatest potential, to our maximum potential. When we share and communicate through the process, when we're able to remain present and conscious enough to communicate and articulate what what we're experiencing, we can expand our consciousness exponentially just by uniting in awareness. This perspective is everything and there's infinite perspective. The more we share, the more we grow. So I would love to hear about your Rosh Hashanah reflections. Please share in our private group Shabbat crew because most of these videos are in there private, although I am live right now on my main wall. I wanted to do that so everyone could at least have a small message available to them to see if they feel interested. And if you are genuinely interested after hearing this message and you want more, come on over to Shabbat Crew. I share privately there because I just feel it's better received when those who specifically want it go out and seek it. So we keep it private in there for those who are interested particularly in Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism and just these sacred codes. They're really for everybody. Hey guys. I love you. Happy reflections.